Well, this is our first. Yeah, this is our first episode with um, a sword boy. That's a sword girl. So we're super excited. Lady and, and, and lady, and lady, and lady to winter. In, 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 uh, Milady to Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, start episode it. title. Here we are. guys welcome to sword boys we're back i don't know what this what this attitude is but this is the theater g we're gonna bring to this podcast uh we're on cut five of three musketeers and we have another guest cut five cut four cut four i hope it was four. Oh god yeah yeah we're i watched cut, cut four. four too yeah cut four we're on cut four I, we're used to doing these in twosies so i'm i'm uh, a little thrown off uh we have our we have our uh fourth because in Three Musketeer movies, there are always four people. So uh, welcome to our guest, uh, Liz Whitaker. Welcome, my lady, the Whitaker. Don't worry, I have a dagger in my hair somewhere. Oh, good. Speaking of daggers, Robin. Mm. Yeah. Rick. You get I'm staring daggers at all of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We are back for cut four. It begins at 51 minutes, 45 seconds, and it ends at one hour, nine minutes, 15 seconds. It begins with D'Artagnan joining Athos at his pity party, and it ends with Milady slipping out the back while her brother-in-law comes snooping. Mm. Mm. And I'm Robin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, welcome to welcome to uh, another D'Artagnan is here to uh, take up the mantle. Um, so we have we have questions for uh, D'Artagnans. Uh, number one. Uh, which uh, musketeer do you picture each of us being? Uh, and also, uh, which singer for All for Love do you picture all uh, us three being? Mm, mm, mm. Interesting. Okay, well, I thought the first question was going to be, how is it that I bring such a level of professionalism everywhere I go? Uh, oh, yeah, but coming up, I guess coming we'll up. just, you know, that'll be a later right. question. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I think, um, hmm, I think Jonathan is probably. Hmm. Oh, There's a lot Porthos? riding this. Porthos. Porthos. I am. I am Porthos. Yes, you're correct. You win. Uh, and then uh, I think Robin is Aramis. I'm. Sh- I've got the tiger blood flowing through me. Okay. I get. Well, but does that really mean Rick is? That that would make me the Athos. And trust me, Rick's yeah, a real okay, Athos. Fine. All right, that's <laughs> fine. I, I can't be an Athos. Athos. That's sometimes. fine. <laughs> that's what I've got. Cool. Okay. Well, the next one, of, of course, "All for Love" is the song uh, of this movie. So there's Brian Adams, Sting, and Rod Stewart. So which one of us fits into those roles for you? <laughs> You're all Brian Adams. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> makes sense. But listen, well, to be fair. Brian Adams was the first concert I ever saw. I really but, thought okay. you were going to say something different. I really no. thought it was going to be like your first love, like your first crush. Well, no, he was opening for Henry Lee Stewart or Henry Lee Summer, who we were actually there to see. But he was the opening act. So technically, he was my first concert. All okay. right. Oh, very wow. cute. I was very into Henry Lee Summer as a child. I don't know who the hell Henry Lee I Summer have, is. Yeah. I'm like, Brian, Brian Adams opened up for... Th- Sure, it's not Ryan yeah. Adams you're talking about. What uh, movies? No, was, what movies I don't, I did think Henry Ryan Lee Adams Summer was write? probably in middle school when this happened? Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I was Henry like Lee, yeah. five or six. Did don't Henry worry, Lee Summer some... write write music for movies that we know about? Honestly, hang on. I didn't realize I was going to talk about Henry Lee Summer, so I honestly don't. Is there remember. a Milady Lee Summer? <laughs> uh, he's an American rock singer and musician from Indiana. Oh, well, that makes sense. Okay, so local boy for you. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, I wish I had a girl. You've probably heard that song. I think I, I, mean, I, I wish I've I had lived a girl it many years. like that. The good thing I is that they had that girl. 
you can yeah. sing all you want. Zoom won't pick it up. So it'll just, it'll be, okay. it'll be dead air. Well, you know what? I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna put that song in. Here it is. Okay. Okay, now we've heard it. You're not oh, going to do that. It's very good. I will. I will put it in okay. there just for you. I just for know. you, Liz. There's so many you're times gonna, I hear that. And you're going to actually episode. edit something? <laughs> no, not really well, but I'll edit it. <laughs> Someone write down how far into this part are we? <laughs> you might have to listen to like the first 10 minutes of the recording before just pushing it out to the well, internet. Okay. Here's a question that is only Liz specific. <laughs> if you don't know Liz and you're listening to this episode, uh, she doesn't have the breadth of movies that she's watched. She has very specific ones that she has fixated on and is very good about it and knows them a million backwards and forwards. Liz, have you seen this movie before? Is this one of the movies that you'd seen before? Yes. Okay, yes. good. Oh, I was yes. hoping because it was in the Disney genre, like it kind of like it is a lighter. It's how a many pre- other? Yeah. It's a pre MCU. Yeah. How many, how many other Three Musketeers movies have you seen? None. Okay. <laughs> this this all tracks. So great. Yeah. That's all I wanted to know. That's what we we're trying to figure out. Okay. Yeah. No, this played on the Disney Channel when I was a kid. This makes sense. Yeah. Like and a do lot. You like it. I love it. Did you find a D'Artagnan cute? As you know, this movie yeah. wants us to think. I think I liked his hair. Mm-hmm. I know that the 90s really tried to make Chris O'Donnell happen. <laughs> sure we did. talked about this previously. Yes. But I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think he's, he seems kind of just like a little brother. Hmm. I don't remember how I felt about it as a kid, but I think I just thought of like, oh, it'd be fun to hang out and go on adventures with him. Hmm. Oh, I like that. Rick, Robin, same question. Who do you find either the most attractive of the four in Three Musketeers? I don't think we've brought this up. Oh, most attractive. As a kid, did you? As a kid, did you go, like look at one and go, "Oh, I oh I like his look. He seems yeah." Like I kind of liked. Uh, I kind of liked uh, uh, Moody Mo- Moody Broody. <laughs> uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Like, Kiefer. Yeah, oh, I Kiefer Athos, Sutherland. Yeah. Athos. I kind of thought he was like cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. When it comes to like what as like a young boy are you told by this movie like you want to be this guy cuz he's yeah. the cool guy. I always saw thought okay, yeah, the Kiefer Sutherland role in this movie, he's the one that like if you grew up to be him, you'd be all set. Gotcha. Well, and I think probably as a kid I was like, oh, he has the tragic love story, so like he's mm-hmm. the most interesting. Like, swoony. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and this in this first scene, you know, getting into it, there's some little brother, big brother energy here. Mm. Um, you fight like a man. Let's see if you can drink like one. I'll drink anything you put in front of me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I've never heard anything less manly. <laughs> 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 like that's a just. Oh, you just turned twenty one. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like, what would you like to drink? Bring me a tall beer. Okay, she hasn't <laughs> learned yet. Yeah, he doesn't okay, know. Anyway. Not learned yet that's when uh <laughs> that's when uh porthos slams a a can of uh catra loco in front of him and what uh, a catra nice what uh what is the what's the first thing you remember ever drinking what was your first drink do you remember breast milk <laughs> oh well you're fixated today Gross. it was uh, awkward because yeah. he was 21 at the time <laughs> <It's gross. laughs> i was so parched I remember I, was like, I will drink anything you put in front of me. I was in a bar in Europe with on a on a, a field like not a field trip. That sounds like we like drove a bus to Europe, but we were on like we flew there like a normal people do. And we were there. <laughs> oh, like, really? It, it was a Latin club. And we all went to we went to uh like the Latin, uh, the Roman parts, and and we were in a I meant literally in a like a discotheque. It's the Latin yeah. club, the Jets or the Sharks. Uh it's uh yeah, great. Uh, it's the it's the Sharks, I think. And they right. um and Continue. And I remember, I remember, I we were all like, "Oh, who's going to order first? Because you can drink at any age, basically. And I, I went J and B straight because I didn't know Ooh. one. I had seen commercials for J and B <laughs> on the back of like Rolling Stone magazine in the eighties, and I said straight because I didn't know any of the 
other lingo. So basically, they handed me a tall glass of alcohol with nothing in it. And I and I sipped it and I went, oh, this is not good, guys. I have made a mistake. So and then someone w- sat down and handed me something that looked like orange juice and said, this is called a screwdriver. Yeah. And I drank and I went, that's delicious. <laughs> yeah. And from then on. I, I'm the, sure for me, it was wine coolers. It was some sort oh, yeah. of wine cooler variation. <laughs> Bartles and James. Yeah. Seagram's. Seagram's. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, Rick. Whatever. I, I wish I could remember. Um my my journey into alcohol started so late in life and was so discombobulated that I never committed it to memory. But I do remember visiting some friends of mine in college, and they had a like like an like a cream based alcohol mixer thing, and I poured it into an orange soda, and it immediately started to curdle. And I'm like, I've made a mistake. <laughs> that sounds awful. Sounds yeah, on brand. It was. It was rank. How are you, Liz? Uh, I think I was doing vodka shots at my best friend's 18th birthday. It was also a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Is that after a Fatty Lee Tubbins concert or whatever? whatever <laughs> <you saw>? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, poor guy. It's called Fatty and Tubbins. Did George Lucas <laughs> name him? <laughs> Listen, if what I've read on Google about Henry Lee Summer has had any bearing, uh, he was... He was not tubby because he went from a cough syrup subscription addiction to meth. And so he got real skinny. Well, he's from it. Indiana. So, yeah. you know, it's one of the three options you have. To right. Liz, Liz, Liz luckily got out. <laughs> she got away from her addictions to my meth. roots. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. So the movie. So the movie, yeah. guys. For, for how serious this Athos D'Artagnan scene is, I'm really glad that we don't stick on the two shot that we start the scene with, because you can see Oliver Platt flailing up a storm in the background. And (laughs) I would not be able to take Athos's backstory seriously. If the whole time I had to watch Oliver Platt doing whatever he's doing with the (laughs) bar mates back there. How do they, um, I I hate to go back to the drinking again, but he's like, pours it. He's like, try this. How do you know what's in there? It is an unmarked bottle. It's just like, whatever. No, this is the good stuff. Okay. If you say so. I'll it's called trust. Okay. I wonder in, in like a, you know, a, a a tavern out in the middle of the woods somewhere, uh, how many varieties of alcohol they even have. I mean, I, right. well, all the yeah, bottles you're just, just drinking have XXX that house on them. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. It's like mostly water. They've watered it down. Yeah, but yeah, this he seems to know his stuff. Obviously, what we're learning is what we learn in this whole scene is he he was a count, guys. I hate to tell you this. Here's a big fact: this story is about him. <gasps> he's the count. Oh wait, that now it makes sense. <laughs> that explains why in every scene he's always you know seeing how, how many things there uh, are and then uh, going uh, ah ah. ah. <laughs> Liz caught on my joke real fast. It's it's why <laughs> in the next scene he's wearing a top hat and little tiny sunglasses. Because he is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> travel oceans <laughs> to see you, my lady. Yeah, my lady, blah. My lady. So Three he's, uh, more drinks. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Bring me more milk based products so I can put it into orange juice, blah. <laughs> I love this combination of like Bram Stoker's Dracula plus the count from Sesame Street. Mm. <laughs> Let's get Gar- Gary Oldman on that. Oh, I'm sh- I feel like he should have done this by now in some. <laughs> some capacity so he tells the story uh love uh met a woman they go out riding she he notices on her shoulder she has a fleur-de-lis which is the a, a murderer's mark he according uh, to this movie yeah yeah, yeah. he uh and, i mean it really does stem from alexander damas uh he made the fleur-de-lis the mark of a murderer uh but i mean it's really more of a royal symbol for purity um the only people that really were getting branded with the fleur de lis, as far as my research was telling, was slaves. It yeah. was just like, yeah, just so you know, this belongs, this this guy belongs to King Louis. He's branded as his property. So he, you know, he gave up on her and he gave her back to the authorities. She said she hadn't, didn't do it. Okay, that's the mm-hmm. that's the story we're being given now. Could, could I give it, you guys some background? No, you because you said you asked the question, so no. <laughs> I'm going to give you some background All right. from the novel, from the novel. If you're, if you're wondering, 
why she's branded, uh, what what the real story is from uh, <laughs> the uh, the dumbass's mouth himself. Uh, the uh, in the novel, Milady was a nun at sixteen, seduced a priest. Milady's all about seducing. Every single situation she gets into, she's seducing. Uh, well, she I seduces. Mean, a... She's got the tools. Yeah. And she's got the talent. Um, she uh, uh, seduced a priest to steal some golden chalices from the church so they could sell them and run away together. But they got caught. And of course, while she's in jail, she seduces a jailer's son to get released from uh, uh, prison and leave the uh, guy to be uh, the, the the priest to be executed uh, alone. Uh, but the executioner also happened to be the priest's brother. So after being forced to brand his brother, he ends up tracking down the lady and branding her with the same symbol. So, yeah, Athos, who is the count at this point, uh, is riding with Milady after they're married. She falls, reveals the brand, just like the movie says. But Athos does not turn her in. He decides then and there he's going to hang her. <laughs> and so... <laughs> <laughs> he hangs Milady, his wife, who's begging for her life, and like I didn't do anything. She's lying, but you know it's also. I mean, uh, I think in the grand, like, okay, I'm not a legal expert, especially <laughs> in you know 17th century France. Disclaimer, like, disclaimer, disclaimer. I mean, this isn't law, boys. We know. Technically, it was the priest who did most of the stealing, and she was just an accomplice to that theft. I Even think it's more it was like her idea. He was probably the one who actually perpetrated it. Yeah. So you know, they're blaming it on the woman. Yeah. For some, uh, that's not a normal thing that men do uh, blame any of their, their faults on, on women. But uh, this guy just happened no, to do no. that. Rick, who do you think killed uh, Milady Simpson and uh, Ron Goldman? <laughs> you think it was the guy driving the truck? Listen, do you think I, it was the compass? I know we all loved watching that slow speed chase along the byway of the the white bronco <laughs> being chased by all of the hey, other white broncos in this, in this cut <laughs> if the gauntlet fits you right. gotta quit mm -hmm. wait what this is, doesn't it fit anyway athos hangs her and just leaves her hanging from a yeah. tree oh and runs off to decide. join the musketeers <laughs> And and he gives up everything out of guilt, just like Athos does in this movie. But Milady somehow survives the hanging. So they're both like they both don't realize that either of them is there. She's assuming that he went off and was depressed and killed himself. And he thinks that she's hanging dead from a tree somewhere. So it's like a Three's Company episode. It's just a giant <laughs> misunderstanding the entire time. <laughs> misunderstanding, miscommunication. As we see towards the end of this cut. Uh, you know, she did end up with Lord the Winter, uh, which she then goes ahead and murders him for his wealth. Yeah. And uh, after they're married, but since the Lord is the enemy of the Cardinal, the Cardinal saves Milady from that execution, and that's how Milady ends up working for gotcha. Uh, the Cardinal. Now gotcha. I won't be defending Milady for the murder of Lord de Winter because okay. I'm pretty sure she actually did do that, mm -hmm. and she didn't get a lackey to do it for her. But we'll talk about her lackeys later on because they are quite a pair. Yeah, quite a mm. pair. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, cannonballs. Right. Can we talk about cannonballs? <laughs> yeah. Whoa, so anyway, I was like cannonballs. Yeah, I love this whole morning after everybody's hung over because of all the drinking, and then D'Artagnan says, "Oh, could you guys stop whistling?" <laughs> and and uh, I think it's. Aramis, who says, oh, I hear whistling, too. And then explosions just everywhere. I went and looked it up. Uh, cannonballs at this time did not explode. Nope. They just maimed you. Yeah. Uh, explosive, just heavy. explosive cannonballs did not enter regular military rotation until like the 1860s. That's what so, I found out, too. 200 oh. some odd years later. Wouldn't they hear the explosion of the cannon? Like, why is it all of a sudden it's just, oh, there's a whistling. When they hear say, a big boom in the background. Is the Maybe. cannonball itself moving faster than the speed of sound? That's the big question uh, that I didn't. I doubt up. it. Uh. So anyway, they, they get shot at. They run away. I, I love this idyllic little area they're in. Uh, I did not look up the castle. Yeah. I did not know this what is, that castle is. This is Liechtenstein Castle. It's okay, in Austria. That's, that's not in France. Uh, it's in Austria. Yeah. Uh, which, of course, sounds like Australia to the people behind this movie, but it is right. Austria. Uh, yeah, the fifth Musketeer was filmed here as well, uh, which made, features two twin King Louis. It must be an Iron Mask situation. Uh, both of those twins played by Bo Bridges. 
So, yep, that's the weirdest one. Liz, you should go look up some of the casting. We talked about this in earlier episodes. The casting of the Bonkers uh, Three Musketeers movies in the past. It's always like, you think this one's weird with a bunch of Americans. Go watch some other ones with a bunch of Americans. Uh, a question I wanted to ask in the previous scene, though, uh, was how much of a tough guy do you have to be when you're just cool with being knocked out? Like, you're all buzz. Oh, I had to punch me right out last night. Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah, like, I don't think this was a... <laughs> isolated incident i'm pretty sure this <laughs> has happened many times before where porthos has uh porthosed his way into a situation where athos <laughs> knocks him out and i yeah. really like the laugh at the end if we're yes. gonna go back to that that little yeah <laughs> it's, yeah it's it's as funny as his <laughs> laugh when he's on top of the uh cart and uh, he's like this is a chase. You're right. Something red. You know, th- it's yeah. like him just appreciating the ridiculousness <laughs> that is Porthos. So, yeah, it's the uh, it's when the serious character uh, allows himself to have a good laugh. We all laugh with him. Yeah. We've never we've all gotten together a lot and none of us have ever punched any one of our friends out for being drunk. Although should we start? Yeah. Is it start. cool? I just want to I've see never... some one of our friends wake up in the morning and be like, did he punch me last night? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like... <laughs> how I, many I've never our, been punched many... in the face before. So yeah, maybe I'll start a fight club. Say, <laughs> in our friend group, how many people do you think have ever actually taken a punch? Oh, none. Nor given. <laughs> <laughs> nope, me either. I mean, I could probably use one. My nose is a little crooked and it would be a lot to like get it professionally redone. But if I get cracked at the right angle... My insurance would probably cover it. I'll remember this, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, next time we'll do you a solid. Yeah. You'll come stumbling into the doctor like Javier Bardem in uh, Skyfall. I mean, like, oh, could you fix me? <laughs> <laughs> so now we're, we've zoomed back to, uh, to bath time. Are we, are yep. we at bath time now? We're at bath oh, time. We're, uh, oh, yeah. Real quick. Oh, <laughs> um, so we're, we're they're being bombarded by cannonballs. We're seeing plumes of fire erupt from the ground where the cannonballs fall. I feel like it would have been more historically accurate to have air cannons throwing dirt up into the air, but burying a dirt cannon is a lot more work and time than just putting in a an explosive charge. Um, when they discover that they're being chased by mercenaries, they are uh, they say, "We'll split up. D'Artagnan rides with me." And Aramis says, uh, we'll see you in Calais, Athos responding, or hell. And mm. I love this idea of someone on the sidelines talking about how their uh, Tauntaun is going to freeze before they hit the first <laughs> marker. And then Aramis <laughs> saying, then we'll see you in Calais. Mm-hmm. Um, while we'll see you in French f- hell. Exactly. While they're fleeing, D'Artagnan is yelling, yeah. And out of curiosity, I did a... Uh, Text find search in my documents here. And the word hya appears 42 times in the subtitles of this movie. And uh, in relation to getting drunk and being punched, I usually buy 750 milliliter bottles of liquor uh, because it fits nicely in my cabinet. And if you took a shot every time you saw the word hya pop up on the bottom of the screen, you would go through two and a half of those bottles and, and be dead. Uh, I would be dead. And then yeah. get punched in the face. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or so, hey, we're either going to punch you in the face, Rick, or we're going to hang you. One right. of the two things is going to be done. Yeah. The moral of the story we'll do, is listen, don't, don't do that we're as a friends, game. So we'll punch you in the face first. Yeah. So you're knocked out when you hang. Yeah, there you, you won't get you won't feel this. I, I appreciate friends. that. And then and then make sure you cut my head off so you can uh, take my <laughs> yeah. quickening. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I must have your power. <laughs> lightning and explosions and all that stuff i'm not interested in your power you can keep it it's fine <laughs> liz doesn't want rick's manpower everyone remember this i was like, liz would you rather have queen anne's uh bathtub i want queen uh, anne's bathtub yeah it's got a sweet pillow queen anne's bathtub that, sounds like a probably sex is just like growing thing oh my god oh it's so yeah. gross. this pillow bothers me so much because you know it's me just too. soak it up why? All of that milk like, or it's whatever okay it is. Okay to have pillows without tassels. Oh, well, they're French. Seventeenth century France. <laughs> like the bathtub pillow probably doesn't need tassels. Yeah. Um, so this is a pretty risque, I thought, for Disney yeah. at the time. This is you actually oops, hmm. relatively you sexual. You don't this only movie, see the top of her shoulders; you also see her knees as yeah. 
As well, Robin hey, has shown us with his background picture today, this movie has a lot of skin in it. Uh, speaking of question, do girls' chests, do they inflate when they're aroused? Serious <laughs> question. Because the first time she saw D'Artagnan, she's asked him, did you need the laces of your corset loosened? And it's like, I know she's not carrying anything down breathing below. Heavy. She, no, she got, heavy. she got, she oh. got gas. She got gas, Robin. <laughs> I was just like, what? what does that even mean? All right. And then the just one, the, sec- <laughs> the second best thing in this entire cut is just is... creepy Cardinal what? showing up. Poor, poor Constance. Did she get like forcibly removed from the room? Like did one of the Cardinal's goons come up and like grab her? And I like to think the away? Cardinal uh, Vulcan neck ripped her and she yeah. just like <laughs> fell over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she. Uh, I mean, before that, like uh, the uh, Anne is talking. She's about looking the, for the, the robe. Yeah, the, yeah. The she robe. went to go get the robe, but it's already in the room. So she's just like, "Oh shit, where's the robe? It's her favorite robe. I lost it. Yeah. I gotta find it." Ah, and that's it. Takes her so long, and that's. I love. So she comes the, running back into the room with an, another robe, like her backup robe. And she's it? already. Yeah. Oh, you I, had it. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, love I found a quote. robe, but it has tassels all over it. So I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I didn't think that this was the right one for after the bath. I love the quote that comes out of the scene where uh, Anne turns to uh, the Cardinal and is like, and Otis, by the way, next time put my robe on after I'm out of the pool. Yes. <laughs> That's a good Superman reference. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, also, uh, sorry, backtrack. Anne, Anne talks to Constance about like the magic that happened between her and Louis when they first saw each other. I'm just, it's not that can't be registering as real. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> what is um, the bag, Queen, guys? Queen, Queen Anne's a thing, right? That's a type of, is it a type of furniture? Or is <laughs> it's it? It's not this Queen Anne, I don't think. Okay. Right. Are you thinking like the cherry cordials? The fuck up. I don't even know what you <laughs> The just Queen said. Anne candies? Yeah, <laughs> like Queen Anne is a brand of candy that you buy, you buy around February. I don't know what that is. You just said cherry cordial. I'm like, what? Yeah. It's a cherry maraschino cherry chocolate. Is on this top, a I cherry think. cordial? No, that's a you smoke. shut your. God, you <laughs> like I don't, I don't know what. Okay, is that what? It, is it a Queen Anne candy? Is there a candy called a Queen Anne? Well, there's a Queen Anne's lace as a type of flower plant thing oh, okay flower plant thing seems to be queen house queen Anne style architecture and furniture according but to... it's not this queen Anne. i don't know if only someone knew oh well if, if only we could find out wait has i always yeah. uh... it looks Sword like stop biz at gmail.com let us know it looks like it's <laughs> british queen Anne. so yes i assume it i assumed it was british there's a queen Anne pool in uh, seattle Oh, good. To the pool, all the pool has is uh, fluffy uh, pillows on the sides that are all yeah, like, half, half submerged. And the water is There's completely also a Queen opaque. Anne beer hall. <laughs> Milk bath. There's a lot of Queen Anne stuff in Seattle. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good okay. to know. <laughs> Did Local she visit color. there at some point? You know, uh, we are very near British Columbia. So. Uh, and like Queen Victoria had already claimed all of British Columbia. So maybe Queen Anne was like, I'm just going to go south and stake my claim to a bunch of stuff there. Gotcha. Queen Anne's like, I, I like this thing they call flannel. And I'm going to wear this <laughs> flannel. <laughs> and everything, Very here, plaid. everything around here is dirty. It's so grunge. It's, so just, it's a little. Mm, so basically. It's from all the mist. Mist. So basically, the uh, cardinal is putting the moves on Queen Anne. Yeah, he's uh, creeping hardcore. He's doing that thing where he'll look into her eyes, and then he will spend most of the scene not looking at her eyes. Yeah, and being he's so not good. at all subtle about it. He's so Just, good at this scene. This scene and the next scene with him is, is so good. The yeah. sexy pope. <laughs> he is a sexy Listen, pope. <laughs> Tim Richelieu is no Frankenfurter. I'll say that much. <laughs> Well, yeah, he's not he's not betting these people. He's not no. he doesn't have that. Although French, that would make je ne sais quoi. <laughs> that would make this movie very different if he was pulling a full Frankenfurter. Oh, if he was, yeah, doing both the king and the queen. Yeah, yeah. Would, that would be yeah. interesting. Well, I mean, the the menage a trois does originate from France. Yes, it does. How do you but, so does so does the move the Eiffel Tower? 
Right. <laughs> you you got to call in Roach for it for something like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the Cardinal is concerned that the King has, quote, fallen into a dreadful melancholy, which I guess is what we're calling blue balls nowadays. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This whole thing could have been an email, by the way. Like, Little just Lord why you're happy to be disturbed. <laughs> this whole meeting could have been an email. <laughs> I really don't understand Queen Anne fawning over King Louis because, yeah, he's he's like the the bangs and the tib and like you've seen the rest of the it, people there. The rest of them are yeah. all like like he's the best looking person in the yeah. castle. It's of the time, and he look. Right. He's good at sword fighting, and he's the <laughs> he's queen. so good. He's and so they're good already at technically really married. Good. Look at those big doe eyes. He's got a giant schnoz and and Lord he's about to have hair. A birthday. How old was he really supposed to be? He's literally like sixteen or something, or something. You know, like in the real times. You know, like this movie. You know, fudges the the ages of the actual monarchs at this time and like the monarchs were actually like no. queen anne's really 14 well i did a little bit of reading history wise and i'm pretty sure queen anne and king louis were buried by proxy at 11 and um they were brought together at 14 to consummate the marriage <laughs> oh good uh, they waited until yeah, they were 14 thank so you make of that what you will okay so they're supposed to, they're youngins at this point right. gross. Ugh. Ugh. is this before or after he is he goes to India and takes over a, a, like a crew of monkeys and and uh, and baboons? What are you Who talking are you? about? I mean, are you great. talking about? Are you talking about Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan? Oh, no. I wish I was. Are you There's talking no about the Louis that Louis song? Oh, he's talking about King Louis just wanting to to be a man. Uh, like, oh, oh you know. that King Louis. I want to be like you. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Wow, do another do Disney do movie. Louis. Yeah. <laughs> Man, add it to the list. <laughs> it doesn't have swords in it, thank God. It's got bananas. Does it? it? Does. <laughs> I think it actually might have some swords in it. In the Jungle Book? I don't know, but it has fire. Fire. All right. Well, you know, Jungle Books come and Jungle Books go, but the one thing that remains the same apparently is the Cardinal. I it's fully expected him. I fully expected him to say the the thing that stays the same is the church, implying that yeah, he, he represents the church. the church. I am the Senate. Right. He, yeah, but, he's moved past subtlety. I'm yeah, not a committee. But, <laughs> <laughs> like he's tried subtext and he doesn't like it. Yeah. Uh, well, he's already, I think once he killed the previous king, he's like, this young queen got nothing. I don't hide anything from her. He's very open. Yeah. yeah. All he's got to do is just uh, lean over her shoulder and breathe onto her neck as he's talking about all they might accomplish together. Oh, France. It's like, <laughs> I really wanted that. to. It, this seems to be better if they were hey, side guys, by side. Don't do that. <laughs> if they were side by side and they were watching like water ballet in this big. <laughs> yeah. You know, if they were. And if she was like, I was not taught this, not by a, not by a Frenchman. Right? <laughs> he just keeps not looking over at her slowly. Yeah, like, yeah. would have been it would have, the creep factor. Would have been ah. um, I, I was really happy that this scene ended where it ended, and there was no chicanery. Uh, I yeah, was, I, was, I, was, I don't I was think really... I'd like this movie as much if there had been. Yeah, I agree. She like gave in. This She's movie like, is right, actually pretty chaste. <laughs> Other than the bosom that is shown in this movie, it's pretty chaste. There's a bosom in this movie? <laughs> yes, at least one. Hmm. I and... think what I like partially about this movie is that all of the like true violence and uh, sexual nature is all implied. Yeah. I'll, and then there's like jokes. I think that's probably what drew me to this movie is that like <laughs> if you see somebody truly getting stabbed, it's like a shadow on a wall. Yeah. And that's how I like my violence. And that's how I live my marriage is mostly implied <laughs> sex and <laughs> jokes. It's mostly that's how it works. <laughs> the implication <laughs> of sex and jokes. The jokes how you, not implied. The jokes are you, yeah. <laughs> stay married for over 25 years. It's implied <laughs> sex and jokes. That's why Jonathan installed that dimmer switch in the bedroom so you can just fade to black. Yep. And just and assume just something assume happened. The sex happens. It happened. <laughs> it happened. I'm sure it did. Uh, is that it? Is everyone done with their notes for 
Well, Robin always comes in at the end with something. Do you mind if I talk about? Can we go back? Let's go back three scenes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that she she brings up her favorite Netflix show right before uh, he goes. She looks at him. She's like, "I think you should leave. Um, <laughs> you get the hell out of here." <laughs> no. You've made um, two. You've made two references that are only s- one of our listeners is going to get. <laughs> well, I, you, I mean, this is a, a deep. Yeah, this is a deeper uh, uh, conversation, though. Like, how does chastity bring one closer to God? I, 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 I was assume you would just spend the entire time being like, oh, I just want to have sex, and you're just totally distracted, and you're not like all about like I don't know. I think the opposite and... happens. I think you're supposed to not. I think take all that energy, all the implied sex, and you move that energy toward your faith it's the sacrifice the it's, it's sacrifice a, yes. brings you closer to god yeah and uh cardinal richelieu is like clearly you've never heard nine inch nails <laughs> <laughs> i yeah, appreciate that one. yeah he's a uh oh, i, I don't get the musical reference but i'm sure it's uh, very witty the song closer the okay liz i, I am you, that to, music I am in you here. to music <laughs> i am music liz that's me i don't i know three songs okay <laughs> They're all by Henry Lee, Lee Summer. <laughs> they are. I, I, his entire catalog is so. <laughs> it's not large because of the mess. Yeah, I assume so. Well, I'm sure it was really good and then it got really bad. All right. Mm-hmm. So we're in the woods right. with D- D'Artagnan and. Uh, in this conversation. Uh, one big, one big Ethel. This is Athos. D- D'Artagnan is really hoping that they are close to Calais. Uh, I can't tell because all of these woods look alike. Hey, I have no idea where we are. <laughs> at least it's green. You can see things. Oh yeah, my gosh. The, uh, yeah. Where are all the smoke machines? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hawk the Slayer taught us that. Uh, well, this is French forests. French forests are beautiful and lush, and English forests are grossing. Well, uh, we, yeah. We, don't you like there's smog? England has a smog problem. France mm-hmm. does not. Of course. Although these uh, mercenaries are trying to fix that by firing off their guns and filling the air with smoke on their own. So they're walking, they're talking and uh, he's telling him about he, he knew his dad and that his dad was murdered by a, a musketeer and that musketeer uh, then murdered him. So yeah. we're learning a little more about the, 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 the three musketeers know D'Artagnan's father. Yeah. See, well, Ath- Athos is writing and he says, ah, yes, a young musketeer named Rochefort, who was a pupil of mine until he turned to evil, helped the Cardinal hunt down and destroy the oh, musketeers. No. He betrayed and murdered your father. Now the musketeers are all but extinct. Rochefort was seduced by the dark side of the force. Mm-hmm. See, I heard, I heard D'Artagnan's father was the best star pilot in the galaxy and a cunning warrior. <laughs> And he was a good friend. He could get on a horse and he could make it spin. He heard that spinning was a good trick and he did that on a horse. It's pretty impressive. Uh, D'Artagnan Sr.'s favorite quote. Wahoo! Wahoo! <laughs> so um, I just want to I just want to shout this We're out killing before, it, before it happens. Um, this is some Hang excellent. On, that count? Of course I know him. He is me. <laughs> uh, D'Artagnan, it's not a name I've heard for a long time. That crazy yeah. old wizard. The yeah, we're talking affair? about. Dar- Do you think he's talking about Athos? <laughs> I'm going to Calais to get power converters. I we we did you waste skip time ha- with your friends later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if there's a center of France, you're on the horse that is farthest from. <laughs> that's because Calais is by the sea, right? Yes, that's what I assume. Mm-hmm. I learned geography from this movie. The one thing I remember the most from this movie is the city Calais. Yep. Robin, what were you going to say? Oh, gosh. Uh, I, well, I was going to say we're we're kind of skipping past like a real important part of the movie. There is a horse murder that happens. Mm-hmm. I'm about to talk we, about uh, Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. <laughs> you said they're walking through the woods. So I was like, well, oh, when the, the, when the, uh, well, the, the horses are walking. I'm talking about the horses. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you're riding a horse, the they're horse walking. is walking. They are walking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this horse gets shot. I want to shout out this horse. His name is Whitey Axelrod. He is a stunt horse. I want you all to know he's fantastic at this. He takes a shot and just falls over. <laughs> and it's amazing. It's it's kind of like the Vulcan neck pinch on uh, Queen Anne's Lady in Waiting. It's um it's excellent. I wasn't expecting horse murder in a Disney movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a little much. 
you were I, I I expected implied horse murder and then the next <laughs> shot the next shot is of a horse with like a like you know they put some jam on its chest listen I would much rather a horse be shot in the chest and fall over dead than be ridden up a ramp and dove off into a shallow pool yeah. like that other movie that Queen Anne is in <laughs> <laughs> or you know like in if you've seen Napoleon oh horses just get destroyed in that movie and it's not mm. good. It's not oh, good, yeah, to watch. right? But it's as it's as the the Napoleon movie. If you haven't seen it, is as historically accurate as this Disney Three Musketeers yes. movie. So <laughs> yeah, all this happened, and all of Napoleon definitely happened. So so they're at a standoff, and it's very young guns, and they've handed him. He's, the worst thing is that he's handing him like all these muskets because none of the guns, you know, fire more than one bullet. So you have to have like eight guns ready to go i'm like but what are you gonna do when you have to like start loading them again you have that's a reloader what... that's someone's role is there the reloader you right shoot, but he's you leaving hand it off and they reload when you're left alone you die yeah Th- this many that's guys why there's three one. musketeers mm-hmm. therefore it's uh it's a real shame Wait. that jack there bauer here doesn't have his musketeers. trusty sig sour p228 because uh if he did this fight would be over a lot faster oh, what yeah. are you talking about I'm talking about <gasps> Toby Keith for Damn it, Chloe. Don't you know this? Who he's talking about? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm talking about uh, swords standing in for guns and vice versa, which gotcha. kind of makes oh, me like wonder. the Romeo and Juliet movie. Yeah, mm. should we? Should Baz we add learns that to Romeo the list? plus Juliet? You know, because the 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 swords are pistols and the long sword is a shotgun. We might have yeah. to add Romeo and Juliet. It might get in there in a in a you know in a TC boo at least TC boo definitely. We could do it as a TC crossover Boo. with those gun boys. Those yeah. fucking gun boys. I hate Fuck them guns, so man. much. <laughs> the worst. So, uh, yeah, the, he he says, you know, go on without me. Oh, I'll shoot you myself, which is okay. That's counterproductive mm-hmm. there. Yeah, you're like, why would you shoot me? That's stupid. <laughs> you could shoot the him in the foot or something. You're the same guy who, that's a death sentence this time right. in France. Any gunshot, any slight abrasion. If no, you scu- he just has to find Porthos. Then have him spare some of his wine. He'll be fine. If you brush up, off. if you want brush up against a column <laughs> in this time period, you may die from the. <laughs> to be fair, if I brush up against the wrong shrub in the current time, I might die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just really glad that D'Artagnan is able to get away without having a Forrest Gump situation where something reaches up and bites him as he's running. Yeah, he doesn't get shot. I don't think D- D'Artagnan does get shot in the arm though, right? Yeah, so... he gets it gets. Yeah. Bow- it's a, a grazing shot. Robin gets winged. Yep. Robin was just waiting on that joke. What? So they go to uh fencing practice with the king. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so excited. Look, guys, it's our most sword minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just can, some, so many swords. Bob Anderson is here, guys. Do, do, am I the only one? Uh, you're yeah, definitely that's... the most excited. Okay. Bob, the sword master. For so many movies, this is the guy that you would call to your movie to be the sword master. Uh, he's the, he was a, an Olympian for uh, Great Britain for fencing in the 50s. He got into Hollywood working with Errol Flynn even um, on this movie, uh, The Master of Ballantrae, where uh, they had him kind of later like, well, you're the best swords person, so you might as well uh, be, the, be the last fight. And then Errol Flynn needed some stunt help, uh, so he ends up kind of uh, fighting himself in, oh, in the nice. stunt work. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, because during practice, he ended up uh, slashing Errol's thigh. Uh, uh, they they dubbed him the man who stabbed Errol Flynn. <laughs> Luckily, Errol Th- Flynn at that point was no longer filled with blood, but with uh, alcohol. <laughs> so yeah. he was fine. It cauterized immediately. He moves on to be, uh, you know, sword master in many movies, including a, a little movie called E Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Um, Mark Hamill is quoted as saying, "Bob Anderson was the man who actually did Vader's fighting. It was always supposed to be a secret, but I finally told George that I didn't think it was fair anymore. He worked so hard, deserves recognition. Um, but yeah, then you know he moves on from there to Highlander, a little movie called Highlander. Uh, yeah, um, twenty-eight episodes of the TV series." Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, Barry Lyndon, Princess Bride, the Pirates movies, the Lord of the Rings movies. He actually said in an interview that Viggo Mortensen was the best sword fighter he's ever trained. Um, 
He also worked on Mask of Zorro, where director Martin Campbell nicknamed him Grumpy Bob because he was a perfectionist. He also, would, he's he, probably he like, 80 years old at that point. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to be doing this anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Why has yeah, no one else right. learned to use a sword? For the love yeah, of God, I no want to stop do doing this. I'm so tired. <laughs> And because I know you're going to appreciate the title of the movie, uh, Bob Anderson was also the stunt coordinator on 2013's Afternoon Delight, starring oh. Catherine Hahn and Juno Temple. Why? I think I saw that. Was there so- were there swords added to the list? <laughs> um, I, but I, yeah, I, his, I have a quote here. He says, I never took up the sword. I think the sword took me up. And I just want to name Bob Anderson one of our patron saints uh, for, he is for our podcast, yep. at least. He is definitely getting to have him in a movie is such a treat because uh, we haven't uh, had his physical form yet. Have we? Cause he mm, trained a trained in, in Highlander. Was he in Highland? Is he in any of the shots? I, I believe earlier in our uh, talking, at least leading up to three musketeers when we were teasing, I said something about him being physical. He wasn't physical. It was, a, no. it was, that was Peter diamond. That was a moron. Uh, uh, this, but yeah, he was uh, one, one of the uh, people who worked on the, the sword fighting in Highlander. Um, he helped train Sean Connery, uh, and King Arthur even too. Um, well, let's stop talking about that and let's start talking about this night. hottie. First let's start talking about this hottie, uh, Sorry. King, King Louis. Oh man, oh, what a bad man he is. Oh, what is he wearing? What is he wearing? <laughs> Puffy shirt, little like yeah. it, I guess like I would call it a fencing vest. Yeah. Like a, it's a fencing, padded vest. A, a padded vest. Cause you can tell the, the swords are all blunted. It's, yeah, there are foils. Yep. Tell me. Let's tell us about. Tell us what you got. The notes you have on the foils, Liz. Uh, that's it. Okay. I got. It's a foil. They All have right. hand guards. <laughs> He's got several different ones to replicate his different swords. He does have. Why does he have so many? Is it, you got to have options. Well, my guess is that there's different level. Like some of them are probably heavier than others. So okay. like you work you have to work up to them and like also different fighting styles would have a different sort of uh sword like one's probably bendier than thrust right it's funny because he's got a he's got a foil or a rapier whatever you want to call it as opposed to the sword that the musketeers use which is a different it's a different kind of sword so i'm wondering if he tries his hand at all swords i'd rather be good at one thing than all things sort of good but you know okay whatever the swordmaster has all has no bangs, and King Louis has all of the bangs. And I'm wondering, <laughs> like, as you get better with a sword, do you get less and you less get bang bangs? trims, right? <laughs> and I, I was just a- reminded. Oh, sorry, I, I was just reminded here that he uh, that the act uh, the actor that plays him is Emo Phillips. I totally mm-hmm. forgot, I spaced it, uh, but go ahead, sorry. Really great comedian, um, and. <laughs> He's not up to big boy swords yet. He he has to use little boy swords. I love his little like flourish at the end that he and his sensei do. It's yes. like when you see a little kid at karate practice and I'm calling it karate practice when he's at karate practice and he like bows to his sensei and it's the yeah. cutest thing you've ever seen. That's what this reminds me of. Oh, I love this. I love it. It's, it signifies the fight is over. I'm almost thinking a swipe should replace clink clang or clang clang. It should be podcast like, over. Well, well, okay. What the, the sound you just made, Zoom did not pick up. So oh. just so you know, <laughs> clang clang. Right. Take Some... note of the time and put a sound of a swipe right where I was oh doing the sound. Oh my God. Okay. Robin, no. one of these no. times you're going to turn on the setting in Zoom that lets you actually just make all of the noise you want, but it's no. not going to be today. I, so I don't <laughs> think you guys want to enable that. Uh-uh. So you want to get rid of clang clang and add whoosh. You want to add yeah. whoosh. <laughs> And Whoosh. people picture in our their heads of us, Swish. you know, respectfully swishing to each other. <laughs> Just put in the words "respectful swish." <laughs> there is an implied swish, I think, in this entire episode. <laughs> Got it. Respectful whoosh. There, just cut that out and use that in place of cling cling. <laughs> respectful whoosh. Respectful whoosh. Gosh, it's all this talk about replacing things that have worked so well in the past. It's very troubling. Uh, much like mm-hmm. the troubling rumors that King Louis has heard about the Cardinal. Here we go. Yeah, skinny Back face Elijah Wood. <laughs> skinny face emo Elijah Wood <laughs> yeah. has heard bad things about the Cardinal, and the Cardinal basically tells him his entirely dastardly plot, which is always the best. He's such for, a great right. gaslighter. 
Oh, he's so yeah. good. I, he's I, also I gonna would... love when Gaslight becomes like the way they light the palace. Oh yeah, he's gonna be, be so, so excited. <laughs> I mean, I he already hope. did it in the he already did it in the uh, queen's bedroom or a bathroom, whatever. So he already yeah. made her feel like, no, no, you're not. No, you're crazy. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> I when love the cardinal that he's just shows up, the truth. When the cardinal shows up, he apologizes to the king for being late because he was wrestling with an important Port- a stare. Gross. An important. Yeah. He was, quote, wrestling with an important affair of state, <laughs> which is, I guess, what we're calling masturbation now. Mm-hmm. gross <laughs> i i wish he was worse at metaphors and he comes in like sorry i'm late but i was i was trying to get the water out of a sopping wet pillow you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to get the milk out of a pillow but <laughs> 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 I, if he's telling the truth, I would love to. I love to know all about his oaths with pagan gods that that he, he mentions as well. So, I don't think he has that, but I assume. No, that I he, think he does. I think anytime he's dealing with any of the mercenaries, like to him, that's like he's like dealing. Like he only needs God when he needs him, and he kind of pushes it to the side when he needs to deal with. Yeah, and when it comes to making yeah. oaths with pagans, that that's like? more of a um, that's a more of a sheriff of Nottingham type of thing which you know is rochefort's other boss mm-hmm. yeah there's no witch working for the cardinal <laughs> she's not oh, a witch she's, been... she's his wife <laughs> how dare really you cool call you... Milady a witch <laughs> <laughs> i will say that everyone keeps a moon uh hidden carefully in their robes everyone we all have a moon. <laughs> <laughs> all right you got uh, <laughs> mark that down i left Yay! <laughs> I want to made... Yay! Robin's funny again. Liz <laughs> liked my joke. Okay, got it. Dear diary. Dear diary. <laughs> Are you there, God? It's me, Robin. So today. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, the I I also love that he's like, yeah, your birthday comes, all your all your questions will be certainly laid to rest. It's like, yeah, we're going. And to I had to you. look this up because you will be one of yeah. my. One of my things, I was like, oh, I wonder, did they actually celebrate King's birthdays? They did. Great. They didn't celebrate Normal's birthdays. No one until like the late 1800s, like Normal's were just like, ah, how old are you? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to die soon anyway. What is it? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but King's, so, well, the, the fun thing about that fun fact is it's not that fun, but the, the, the really fun part is. It went all the way back to Pharaohs. Pharaohs used to do their birthday, but it was the birthday of when they became a Pharaoh and became a god. So Pharaohs had birthdays, but it wasn't their actual birthday. It was when they ascended to Pharaohdom, which is a pretty, that's an interesting fact. Mm. I think the biggest question I have about uh, King's birthdays is do the queen, does the queen not normally attend a King's birthday? Because Louis seems kind of shocked that Anne is going to be there. And it's like, you are Boy, married. Hi. She is the queen. <laughs> it's an official event of state. Why would she not be there? As Cause the have queen? you ever tried to get a 14 year old to go anywhere? It's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's annoying. Okay. Who knows what's going to happen? Anne is coming. Yeah. Louis, Anne's coming. She's Are we having queen. a play date? Yeah, you're having a play date. <laughs> oh, Anne's man. coming? Not with you, apparently. Hey, Anne, my mom says you have to leave. <laughs> oh, so. it's all the all the invites went out from King Louis and uh, all the, the courtiers show up. And they're like, well, we had to come. Our parents said we had to come to your party. Well, didn't they my invent, mom said I had to. Didn't the French uh, invent the RSVP? Aren't they? They did. Yeah. <laughs> they're the, they, they're oh, like, God. what if we send out a card that makes them come? Oh, I like that. The really scary vampire party. Yes, right. welcome to the really scary vampire party. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, our 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 hero D'Artagnan is hurt. He is sleeping. The horse is walking. In case you're wondering, he's not. But the, the horse, horse is with walking. the great bangs. With he has he has Lord he has King Louis bangs. Amazing fringe. Yes. Um, that is uh, Liz. You get to name this horse. We haven't. I, I think we've named D'Artagnan's horse before, but uh, as a guest, I would love you to name him. Or Sugar her. muffin. Sugar muffin. Let's write that down. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that a uh, sugar muffin doesn't hang around. Nope. 
Sugar, sugar muffins, muffins on the move. Sugar sugar muffins muffins out. Horse. <laughs> I'm not trained to worry about my riders. I don't. We don't have a bond. Nope. Because mm-hmm. yeah. this isn't his original horse. He gave that one to a kid. Yep. yep. So Sugar Muffin has no loyalty to D'Artagnan and like is tired. Sugar, sugar Muffin's thirsty. It. Yep. Yeah. Sugar Muffin thinks that entire ocean is drinkable. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid horse. Big water. <laughs> Yep. So the sugar muffin's gone and he's passed out and then a cart comes up and then we meet. Well, we haven't been introduced to her yet, but we meet Milady and her two henchmen, the greatest two henchmen out of nowhere. They're out of nowhere. We got yeah. Parker. I really hope that the Asian guy is Parker. He is. Yeah. That, yes. Okay, and, good. And then the space scar guy is Henri. Henri. Well, she calls him Henry. Henry. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they're they're translating the French for us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you want to, if you want to be French, like the about it, it's Henri. And part if you're, if you're when they show French, up, I'm English, like, Henry. I'm kind of like, am I watching Ice Pirates or not Ice Pirates, but a uh, uh, Time Bandits? I'm like, what is this? Like, it's very <laughs> weird. It's a very. I would not expect the two men that come up to come up into the scene. Like they kind of look down at the body. Uh, it's like it's like you got this one guy from Central Casting, and he seems Cockney. He's like, mm. oh, look, we have E. Look what we <laughs> got ourselves E. Mm-hmm. And the other guy doesn't really talk. Uh, Parker, right. Parker's a very, very quiet man. Uh, but they, uh, M- Lady De Winter, uh, picks him up because he's handsome. She picks up, I guess, basically, uh, she she picks up uh, road trash, <laughs> <laughs> attractive road trash. Yeah, yeah and and uh, puts it in there. Yeah, oh, uh, you know, I might be able to have sex with this road trash later. So <laughs> bring him along. Uh, if you want a little giggle, this location is in Cornwall, England, and it's called Rumps Point. Mm. Rumps Point, or just the Rumps. Mm, nice. <laughs> it's very beautiful. My yeah. lovely lady, Rumps. Oh, <laughs> I regret that. <laughs> Liz, just so you know, I laughed. I did laugh. At that one. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. I get laughs all the time. <laughs> And speaking of rumps, uh, D'Artagnan wakes up to two chest rumps. <laughs> lovely lady chest her la- rumps. Her, lady, her lovely lady lumps. Um, yeah. And Rebecca de Mornay is on in full whatever you want to call it. Full seduction mode, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. as an she's actress and a person, cradle. I don't really know that she's ever not been. Like, even when she's like at herself and not acting. She's incredibly attractive and not only attractive, she has something about the way she speaks. I don't know what it is. She's just, just alluring. One of, those, one of those women. And uh, luckily she has bangs just like D'Artagnan <laughs> and the king. So <laughs> it's a noble thing. Apparently only nobles could have bangs. Or se- it's, this is the movie telling us they're sexy. The horse, sugar muffin, mm-hmm. sexy. <laughs> Milady de Winter, sexy. The uh, the first thing that Milady de Winter says to D'Artagnan when he wakes up is "Welcome back." Did you dream? And I, it's like if I ever woke up in that situation, I would insist that I was still awake or I'm still asleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no weird. way. There is no way I would ever be mm. awake in this situation. I'd wake up and go, "Hong Kong, nope, I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awake, and I apologize. Sorry." <laughs> and then he's like, and "Then he's like, where am I?" And she's like, "This ain't no disco. It ain't no country club either. This is Calais." Well, your references don't sorry if it's from a song i don't know it listen all yeah. she wants to do is have some fun yeah someone just, just take a picture next to me someone just yep. take some pic a picture of robin's face when he's doing a musical reference because it's always this <laughs> and i don't know i just know that means it's a musical reference i don't know the musical reference okay. the, the problem with that musical <laughs> reference is that they're there at noon on tuesday they're 12 no. hours early oh no at a bar that faces a giant car wash. And we get to see uh we get to see uh, the <laughs> most of D'Artagnan that we're gonna see in this movie. Yes. I, I do really wow. appreciate that uh you know this this movie gives something for the young women that you know wanted to go see this movie in the nineties. Rippling boy body, yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's got bad goals, but it's smooth, smooth, yeah. Smooth. It's so smooth. <laughs> It's disconcerting, Lisa. <laughs> I yeah. just want to say that just so everyone knows, this is, we're doing this movie in the year of our Lord, 2024. All the kids in my son's high school have this haircut that, that <laughs> has. They all have this weird Afro 
hair now. This it's is curly come back. nothing. Yeah, it's curly nothing. It's come back, by the way. My son had this until France. a couple of weeks ago, and then he Mahomes did on the side, and now he's got it on top. But I'm sorry, what? on the side, Mahomes. Oh, oh, let me do this, Mahomes. <laughs> it's a football reference. <laughs> I did the. Oh, yeah. okay, I get it now. <laughs> um, and so they're talking. They, she's wooing him, I guess, and then he, he's the worst spy. He's oh really God. bad at this. <laughs> he wakes up and he's like, spy details. <laughs> he's like, yeah. LA, I've ah, got to tell somebody Tuesday about somebody. Tuesday midnight. <laughs> oh, now you know I'm on to you? Oh, okay. Yeah, she says, okay. do you have a name or shall I make one up for you? And he's oh like, my, my name's D'Artagnan. She's like, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, she, he is eating out of her hands. I'm D'Artagnan, <laughs> kid detective. I like that. <laughs> I can drink anything you put in front of me. <laughs> yeah he is a kid detective in this <laughs> golly hey. gee ma'am i think it part of your shirt of, fell off it reminds yeah. you of the kid detective from the bureau of balance adventure zone what was his name oh i forget oh my god that's a million oh, that talk about references only one person's gonna hear. <laughs> i know but i know you'll know <laughs> I don't remember the kid's name. Like, yeah, he's like the little boy detective. He's the most annoying character in the. I just want Griffin McElroy to like dub over the voice to everything D'Artagnan says now. <laughs> Gee, Mister, I can drink anything you put in front of me. Yes. So, hey, uh, lady, I'm a spy. <gasps> My grandfather's silverware. His name is Angus McDonald. Yes, Angus. <laughs> and he talks like this. <laughs> Hello, sirs. How are Hello, you, sirs? That's My basically... grandfather silverware. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness, you have a fleur de lis on your shoulder. <laughs> oh, I think that means your Aramis is what Aramis was the. Oh, he was the count all along. <laughs> this is like a horrible children's choose your adventure book. <laughs> <laughs> that little interlude was for three people. Not even. <laughs> Well, if George listens. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, I yeah, really, she's a uh, she, she, what? Milady? I appreciate that uh, Milady de Winter knows exactly who to go to for her laundering because she tells D'Artagnan, your clothes aren't going to be ready for another hour. And it's like, wow, my modern water washing machine is not that accurate. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mine says 34 minutes, but then it does something else in between. And it's <laughs> and never it done in 34 minutes. You come back mm -hmm. half an hour later and it's like, oh, now you've got 45 minutes. Until you're done? <laughs> you're like, okay. Was that 30 minutes of what? Washing? And now it's in of the spin identifying cycle? the mess. Yeah. So I don't Golly know. Who, gee, why are these clothes so dirty? I don't know who this launderer <laughs> is, but they're really good. Goodness. I'm only wearing my small clothes underneath. So Listen, yeah, he, you got to wear the long leg small clothes. That way it cuts down on the chafing from all the horse riding. That's true. I will mm. admit as a, as a person who has ridden a horse in, um, I've ridden in jeans, which is normal, but I've also ridden it in shorts. I've ridden a horse on shorts. It's one of the worst experiences of my life. It is. <laughs> you Seems bad. Horses seem like they're super smooth and wonderful. They're not. They're yeah. not. Golly gee, horses aren't smooth. They're not smooth. <laughs> at all. G, horses aren't smooth. They're not. They're rough. Oh, it hurts so bad. I actually had to put on a pair of chaps, which is pretty funny with shorts, but it's the only <laughs> thing that like saved my inner thigh. Get that little peak of skin. Well, my, from the back, I was wearing chaps. I was literally look like like a sex Jeez. dungeon worker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing shorts <laughs> with chaps. Yeah, someone was dropping a glowing leech into your ear, yeah. and you got real angry. <laughs> yeah. I look like a sex a sex warrior from um, Beastmaster. Yeah. So he basically spills the plan, golly oh, gee, yeah. and yeah. and then she tries to murder him with her hair her hair um her hair hair sword. Yeah. Uh, D'Artagnan says I'm on a mission for the king, and Milady de Winter says I've heard that before. So I guess that's a common <laughs> pickup line in I can see in that. LA. Yeah, like, like if you're just like a vagabond, like running from the law, you're like, oh, I'm not running from the law. I'm on a mission from the king. Yeah. I'm not woefully unemployed. I bought a exactly. for the king. <laughs> it's uh, the uh, 17th century version of uh, like a uh, crypto trader. Right. <laughs> mm. Oh, he's like a bro. Is he wearing yeah. a vest? He was wearing a little vest earlier. So, yeah, yeah, see? He's a What's Chad? the last time D'Artagnan's had a shower or a bath, you think? Well, None okay, of these he people definitely have got ever. one. If it he helps, he got one from Belinda. Milady licked him clean. So. Yeah, she. Yeah. <laughs> 
He doesn't look like he's been in a a cannonball fight. His face is the best. (laughs) Just like, oh my God. This is why we're sword boys and not sword gentlemen. Okay. I assumed that she like had him bathed in front of her so that she could watch. Oh, sure. Yeah. But yeah, I I don't know about this. She definitely put back on his giant pantaloons. (laughs) She put them back on him. Poor Parker. Jeez. Yeah, I imagine Parker. To wash all of him? (laughs) She she made Parker do it? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to watch. So when he kicks him in the face, he's like, you know, I bathed you like an hour ago. Now I'm, <laughs> now I'm kicking you in the face. I know all your weaknesses. I've seen you naked. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I, I never thought about that. And I if love, you see somebody naked, you probably do know all their weaknesses. I just love that the lady to winter has a Kung Fu guy. Yeah. It just feels very yeah. nice. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. Kung Fu. This Henshin. is what I've been waiting for. And, uh, and the artful <laughs> dodger. Whatever, this other fucking guy. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm going to talk like yeah, She found me in London. I was a pickpocket. <laughs> can I uh, Can I talk about Parker? I did. I, have, what, yes. I, don't, think I, about Parker? I don't think we're going to be able to stop you. Yeah. Tell okay. us all about Parker. Philip Tan. Philip Tan. Uh, born in Singapore, moved to the UK at age five, became a champion at gymnastics, then martial arts, and then disco dancing he won seven disco championships uh but he's uh mostly done mostly stunt work for a ton of great films uh temple of doom batman tokyo drift all pretty much the same quality of movie uh he tokyo did... drift hold on <laughs> hold on <laughs> there's not a lot of kicking in tokyo drift what was he doing there you know the, uh he was there uh to i don't know was he there with the Drift King and that, and that kid? <laughs> was he there yeah. with the Drift King and that horrible kid? Yeah, the cowboy. I, I, I think he was. I don't know. Uh, he he trained uh, Ki Huai Quan uh, for Temple of Doom. There you go. Uh, he trained uh, our old friend uh, Christopher Lambert for Greystoke. <laughs> uh, and apparently, he must be great friends with Ken Jeong because he is Ken's stunt double in all three Hangover movies. And for some reason, on his sitcom Doctor Ken. Philip Tan worked as the stunt coordinator. Which maybe, maybe, I don't that's actually. I never saw the movie, but or rather the show. But uh, right around the time he filmed uh, Three Musketeers, I was like, "Oh my god, I know this guy from somewhere." Yeah, he was in uh, Martial Law with uh, Chad McQueen and Cynthia Rothrock. Uh, Chad played uh, Dutch in the original Karate Kid, so we did do a special uh, TC Boo of that on uh, Karate Kid in it. Although we didn't oh. call it TC Boo. Uh, Philip but, uh, Tan also did stunts on Hot Shots Part Two, so he was off oh. doing that other movie with <laughs> yeah. Charlie Sheen instead of being around for sword training. <laughs> well, luckily he doesn't need sword training because his feet are his swords. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, feet are just you know very flat. The swords of the body. Swords. They're meat swords. On. Yeah. <laughs> so he, yeah, he, they, they, well, they got to leave because uh, they're, they're. I guess they don't really under- know if if this terrible, you know, spy actually is smart and has already like set a trap for them. So they take him with him. And as they're leaving, we see the deep voiced uh, current uh, Count to Winter mm. show up. And, he's, and it's very ADR. It's like, I'm here to get my. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the lady to winter? Uh, and the other guy's like, uh, uh. why doesn't D'Artagnan go, hey, up here? Because <laughs> he's got a knife to his neck. Jeepers, like mister, I'm up here. Uh, yes. <laughs> They're like, nobody know. could be truly this stupid, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. there's a plan here. He's doing this on purpose. This is obviously a right? ruse. Right? His, uh, yeah. Right? You didn't know that this is, it's funny enough, Jeepers, he's a, he acts just like this in every movie. In vertical limit, he's boy mountain climber. <laughs> Golly gee, I gotta get up there and get my sister or she dies of edema. <laughs> I, just, I just watched the movie recently so i know what yeah i think that might be the chris o'donnell problem is that he is eternally angus the boy mcdonald chief, like boy detective yeah <laughs> he is i mean even on that new csi whatever show uh, ncis or whatever the hell it, whatever los letter, angeles yeah he's on I, i'm sure he tries to act like a man but it, it just seems like he's just like jeepers i get to drive a car today yeah <laughs> I mean, that's what I assume. Uh, yeah, and this uh, this kind of ends with them running away. Wow. Is this as far as uh, of the movie that you've seen so far, Liz? Or Oh, wait, you've seen it before. I've seen yeah, the whole she, movie. She knows what happened. Oh, okay. Now, 
now at later in the movie we find out her real name right uh in the sixth cut is when i believe well, we i mean oh, no. we she, introduced she her as liz the fifth that's cut. her real name oh we're talking about somebody else no, i'm talking about lady de winter okay she goes in the fifth cut she we learn her name right doesn't he call her but doesn't athos call her he doesn't call her my lady uh-huh. he calls her pam Let's call her Pam, Milady Pam De Winter. I mean, she she introduces herself as oh, De Winter. Her name is to... Sabine. Okay. Yes, because I in my mind I hear oh, his voice. Right. Like, Sabine. Like, yeah. He's, you know, he says it. Damn it, Sabine. Took and me a moment, but I found it. In my you notes. are quite possibly the worst Jedi I've ever heard of. <laughs> oh, but you have heard of him. <laughs> Yeah, and this cut cut four ends with the with the getaway, with them slipping out the back, mm-hmm. which means <gasps> that everybody should come back because next time the Musketeers reunite aboard the Persephone, where they foil Milady's attempt to escape. With Richelieu's treaty in hand, Athos interrogates Milady, but only when she begs for forgiveness does she reveal the cardinal scheme. As Richelieu prepares to assassinate the king, the musketeers race back to Paris, calling for their brothers in arms to rally to the king's aid. With the king's birthday celebration underway, D'Artagnan is able to foil the attempt, and the musketeers reveal themselves to take control of the castle. Dust off those swords and tunics for cut five of the three musketeers. I can't wait to see. I miss I miss Crapton Roachfort. <laughs> That's who I miss. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen him. Yeah, it's been a while since he's seen his left side of his body. I hope he wasn't uh, stabbed in a throwaway scene in the middle of the movie, removing him from the rest of the narrative. <laughs> Was that, wait, who is that? That's what happens to him uh, as, um, you know, his Prince of Thieves character. Oh, he yeah. Gets stabbed right. halfway through the movie. Oh, yeah. What does removed. happen to him in that? Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's for the, that's for the. <laughs> That's for Travis Bow and the. That's uh, for Robin Minute of Hood. Thieves. Yeah, yeah, Minute of Thieves can do yeah. that. Fuck those guys. <laughs> no, we <laughs> like Rob. Oh, oh. we Wait, like those Rob. guys. <laughs> There's not more than one. It's just Travis. Travis of the Bow. <laughs> so yeah, mm. this was this is a great uh, this is a great cut. I having Liz on is always a great uh, guest. You bring so much to this. This was uh is this is this one? Oh, I of... thought you were gonna keep saying nice things about me. Oh, um, you're you're so <laughs> tall. <laughs> and smell good how's that oh okay all right we you can want me to stop that. i can stop yeah yeah you okay. can stop now all right thank you <laughs> lick yourself clean and get ready for next week's episode <laughs> actually i said next week's two weeks guys yeah, don't come weeks. back next week there won't be an episode no. Yeah, cut five isn't happening until the end of April here. If you yep. come back next week, you just have to listen to this one again. Yep. <laughs> uh, Liz, we're here in middle the middle of April. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Anything we should check out? <laughs> mean Girls uh, Musical Minute? Uh, no, I've been working really hard on a coloring book. So uh, maybe that'll be published by then. Hell oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, for anybody that doesn't know, Liz does really good line art. I'm, and she uh, also used to podcast. Yeah, once upon a time, I mm. used to podcast. Now I listen to audiobooks and draw coloring books. Hell yeah. And hang out with her friends. Coloring we all get books. drunk and punch each other in the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, okay. Well, if you want to find us, we're at swordboys.biz on the internet. It's got all of our links. And go find Sword Boys on Instagram and on That's TikTok. also where I'm going to sell my coloring book. Yeah, on the TikToks. <laughs> so. Swordboys.biz. Boy, boy, stop biz. There will be no links to coloring books on there. Sorry. But you can buy our t-shirts. Yeah, buy our t-shirts. Yeah. Please. Yeah. And we'll we'll see you uh next time with this implied swish. <laughs> Respectful swish. Respectful swish. Clink clang. Clink clang. Clink clang. <laughs> all for one. And, oh, and one and for one all. One for all. <laughs> Golly gee. Golly gee, mister, that was a great ending. Let's make it all, all for one. And all.